integrated. Here's the distribution, but we're going to take off the top or take off the, the residential piece and the mental health that we know is being part of fee service. And then distribute the balance at just with this apportionment piece that we have now. Distribute the balance and then carry those other pieces at the next month. I mean, either that or Alexa, that money's going to sit there yeah. and, and it's not going anywhere until we come up with a way to get it out to the district. And by the way, it's for the interest and the future. You know, that's the employment and returns and everything like that. It's interesting. But it's, we've had it for a few weeks now, waiting to get it out. So that would be my recommendation. If, 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 that, if everyone wants to voice it, that is your concern and what you're going to talk about with your superintendents, if those are the things, because like I said, it's going to get stalemated again at superintendents mm -hmm. if, if the finance people have concerns that they need to recommend and, it. And what makes it difficult is that's exactly why we had this joint meeting. And so this joint meeting is no longer a joint meeting. And so the same issues that had been brought up earlier, I mean, previously with the numbers changed, some of those same issues are still here. And so we really don't, even moving forward now, program hasn't been here to really talk about it, so it's... Well, I think seeing it, seeing it in, in, in the worksheets makes it, me a lot more comfortable on what's happening. I can, I can see the flow a lot better. I, I have less issues with the personnel side. I mean, I think that's your guys' business to run the self of the way you think it's most effective. It is a little odd to, I think, incorporate it into a program, but to me, I have less issues with the personnel side. You know, I think you guys run the self how you need to run the self and if there's additional needs, that um, you know from a cash standpoint I agree with you I mean I think you know it's, but I don't know how you you know I think that's something that's easily addressed by saying based on this preliminary model 50% of the cash gets distributed or something like that I, I you know yeah. I, it was just helpful because to see we this have, we have two I mean I don't know if I said it but we have 2.5 million dollars that we received of the state money the federal money we've received and we're spending that so that's okay but it's It was helpful, I think, to see it here in, in kind of language I understand, that, and it was a little different from the narrative from before, mm -hmm. and so that alleviated some of my concerns on that, the overall. Well, I'm in agreement with Janet, I think that we at least need to move forward with the concept of how to disperse it, and, you know, we get that settled, and, it, you know, that means, like you said, you know, dispersing 50% of it and holding some back, you know, based on what we, what is desired for leasing personnel and all those things. That makes the most sense because it's just not going to I mean, be sitting there waiting for us to decide what, you know, what we're So, do. First, what do districts do? Huh? I mean, do? I mean, do we want to go around and right. thumbs up, thumbs down? I mean, we do that sometimes and right. I don't know. I'm okay with the concept. On I'm everything, mm -hmm. including mm -hmm. facilities and staff change. I'm not, only because of the, I would like to see a scenario on the counseling piece coming off the top prior to distribution, what we had talked about. You know, it, so I'm, I'm not confused, sure about I'm confused, that. I'm confused, because I think okay, that's what you we're guys doing. took the residential off the top, right, Right, but not the counseling component. Not the counseling, but the, but the Not the individual counseling, the so residential. residential piece. Why can't they both be off the top? Well, I, well. And I just would like to see what that looks like. That's all. And that's the only reason. Other than that, you guys can bypass me and take a vote. Well, from an elementary perspective, I, I would say it's a more global issue because the state recognizes the high school districts cost more, and that's why you get 10 to 15 percent more revenue on the money. And so I think it's a more global issue than just saying, "Hey, we're disproportionately affected by this." Mm -hmm. I would say, "Well, you also get more money to run a high school district." Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, I, I think there's a give and take there. I think. Well, the we have more expenses also there. Yes. Well, I, but you yeah, don't have the but, you know, $100,000 in-home autism cost either. Well, but I, and, 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 elementary and, student. and I think the compromise of saying residential disproportionately affects high school districts, we're taking that off the top. I might make an argument to say, no, I'd like to see that more equally distributed. But I don't have, I mean, I think that's kind of a self -a decision where they said residential off the top. Even my special law director said, I think that's a good idea to do that. Um, and the rest of it is divided by how much you refer kids to the program. So, to me, I felt like that was a good compromise. Um, Just to add one more layer of confusion, <laughs> it 
just dawned on me when I was thinking about this, that there's a big piece, you have, we have federal money sitting there. Right. But a portion of that goes to the SELPA, and you... All, of, all the federal money. Okay, okay but my pe pro point is, is if your invoices don't equal what we they're have received, be then yeah, well, you're going to be calculating because interest I, and keeping the I, and all I just gave a million two hundred thousand dollars is the estimate this year and we're we've received three or four months of billings. So we're 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 well on our way with expending we're gonna expend I mean if you more, look more at than the federal money. What we're projecting for sure. The federal amount only equals half of our is equals less than half of our residential okay. projection. All right, then yeah. So I don't think there'll be a don't problem want the federal money there, sitting there. Janet. <laughs> Uh, I'd better do it the other way around, if that's the case. Okay. So did you, are we, are we still up for trying to make a vote? But I know there's not yeah. many program people here, but uh, I don't know if that's going to be problematic. Liz, well, I mean, we haven't really heard from Sheila. Um, well, my program person wasn't here. I don't know right. if she was here this morning, but um, thought she was going to be here. But I agree with Phil, the personnel issues, um, like he said, it's, it's really up to you how you need the staff to provide us these services. And I think we need to, like Janet was saying, we need to get the money out and not keep having to come back and have these same conversations without anything being decided. So, uh -huh. And are you okay like, with the facility? Or, or, you know? um, yeah, I think, I think we're pretty okay. I, I do see the concern of getting involved in something that could end up costing us more. Right. So that's a little bit Yeah. I mean, if, if one of the districts had a facility that we could revamp and use, I mean, one of the things is um, because of the confidential nature of counseling, um, you know, the space has to be configured in such a way to be able to have um, closed doors and such, and that's not right. something that we usually have in our um, school facilities, that the facility across the street uh, had been a Kaiser facility, and so it is configured for confidentiality. Um, so that is one of the considerations. You know, I mean, we could always look at, um, you know, if there was an empty school or mm -hmm. um, a large enough wing of an empty school that we could, you know, come in and remodel. I don't know, if, you know, what the savings would be, and then you would deal with it down the road in case we started growing again. But, before you enter into a contract on facility, does that contract have to go back to the superintendent? You know, before um, we enter into any kind of multiple year contract? Um, I was just trying to make this group I know, better. because I the fact that well, somebody would approve. we were trying to go back and forth too to figure out what the role of the county office was in um, leasing because we would not hold. We don't hold the lease, yeah. the county office they, they holds the lease. They do have to do it, but, but the, obli the financial obligation right. is the self. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm just saying in the past when we have leased facilities outside, it, it's like the 9th Street, the, yeah. you know, superintendents did approve the financial obligation of that lease, and I understand they that it's it as part of our ongoing budget. But it was, yeah, multiple years, however many years it was originally, just to say, you know, but yes, you, somebody does not, it's not in some of the liabilities for Understanding that, but I was trying to make everybody feel better that before anybody entered into a contract of multiple year, that you know, superintendents would get the final decision on how many years one year, two year, mm -hmm. three years, whatever that they would. Yeah, and I mean, we've had some preliminary discussions and advice that we've gotten from facilities, but there hasn't been any final. I mean, because um, they were able to discuss some of. Uh, the costs with us and uh, whether the costs were in line with other things and what uh, what was it about the taxes and right yeah. different things. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of things. Um, but yes, that dollar amount could change depending on whatever. Does, does the facility have to be an empty school? I mean, what is because typically don't they go out to the school sites or just for residential kids or what? One of the, I mean, the, they Again, also I have office the space. They have office at each of the, well, right. they don't have individual offices yes. right now. What we would like to see is that, you know, that they would have space where they could, um, you know, 
have uh, individual sessions, perhaps, or family sessions where they could meet with families. Right now, they're having to wrestle up rooms. We have a half a dozen rooms that are lined up. <laughs> I have, it, have that <laughs> access from the, the separate lot and whatnot. Is that something that is doable? I don't know how many space, how many rooms they need. Yeah. Because I'm sure there's a few of us that have a lot of empty rooms on. Yeah. And that's, and that's what we're currently doing. Currently, we're, there are two different sites within the Central School District. So as part of the facility piece, Central is getting the credit for providing those two classrooms. Now, if, if we chose to go, someone has a facility <coughs> or a space or something that would just work great, like Jen said, we probably have to make some modifications to it to, you know, to, to really serve those. So it's adequate space for the counselors to do. Well, I guess my question, what is an adequate space when we've got five or six portables all lined up that are not being used? I, if I, could, I don't know if that's appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. Phil, I don't know if you visited your Medi-Cal clinic, and no. Chino, I don't know if you have, I have, and because we're during a Medi-Cal clinic in County San Diego, we were done. They are classrooms, and they are classrooms that have been modified in some way, like there may be a wall in the middle of them, like this, and there may be a wall where there's you know, treatment over there and a the treatment room over here or an observation room, but it, it, it's a basic, a, it's a school site that they're in. And um, now if you are later on, Joan, going to go to a uh, medical clinic type model, there are some required facility requirements and it has to be locked and, you know, that all the files have to be secure. And, I mean, all and your different. actual site needs to be approved prior to you getting that medical right. contract. So. I mean, that is one thing I think in the future, you know, for us to keep look that at. Mind, keep that mind um, but none of it is, that cannot be acquired on our school site. Right. You know, I said that the two we visited were both on school site. Yeah, I mean, anything you could do, you could, Mario, you could take it. I mean, we have, we took a, a storefront and made it into a school. You know, well, I guess I'm just saying that if there's a concern of a two year, three year lease, uh -huh. you know, kind of a thing where there's probably a few of us that have portables in our Yeah, but you charge too much down there. No, I don't. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure my superintendent would love to entertain the idea, but we're appropriate, you know, we were like this. But you get up there. But you're saying that a lot of the counselors go out to the school site during the school day and pull the kids out. So how much would this facility actually be used? Or is that being used for something different type of counseling? It would, it would allow us, for one, to expand our current counseling services. So it would also allow us to house everybody together, a a, including their support staff, because currently their support staff's housed here. You know, they have to come back and forth. You know, somebody comes around, we, you know, get files back and forth. We don't have a really central file or storage. When you say expand services, does that mean you're going to acquire two more costs with the services that we would be expanding? We, some of it. Some of it is, um, no, I don't think the cost would be more unless, I mean, it would be a way of having a different array of services. Currently, you know, it's pretty much individual counseling. They do do, because um, under individual counseling and caseness, it does allow you to do family therapy. And so they've never listed that separately on the IEP because the caseness code includes that. And so, you know, they do some family therapy. They would certainly like to do more. And as they're taking on more complex cases, this is a role for the service that they, you know, people would get from Department of Behavioral Health. So we're really taking on all of Department of Behavioral Health's array of services. So they'd be, but they, that would be additional services we would be, they would be responsible to pay. In no some additional charge. I mean, we haven't charged additionally for that. But then who's paying for the counselor or the person that's doing the counseling? Because Maybe I'm reading too much into it. Yeah. Yeah. Their time is already, because of that 1.3, the their salary is in there. So, but she's saying it, provided, it would allow us to provide additional services. I'm just seeing additional dollars. <laughs> Well, I guess for those maybe additional different, services. different way of providing say, the services. So, you know, you may have a, it may be that you can make a breakthrough by bringing in the child and the parent rather than just seeing that child that week in their classroom. Because the issue is really where some other people need to be involved to make that change. 
you know, we also, um, we hold, I think there's only three groups where you can bring in a group of students and do counseling with them, which, you know, is a more cost-effective way if that meets the student's need. But because we do those like at the ED classes, because we don't have enough kids with similar needs in one place. So, you know, they could be at three different schools. Um, so, I mean, that would be an advantage. One of the main, uh, in the clinics that I have visited for this diagnosis, the main advantage of a centralized location is their paperwork and their notes and which are just astronomical. But that's, that's probably the thing that would be what they need a centralized for the most. Not yeah. so much the counseling happening there. Um, if Not to have, I mean, we certainly wouldn't shift the counseling that's happening, you know, the majority of the counseling that's happening in the schools over to the clinic. Um, because for one, I mean, ultimately that can cost the districts more because you would have to pay for transportation. If, you know, uh, and also, I mean, one of the things that I know the program people value about our service and why they even pay for clinical counseling services all this year is the fact that it is delivered at the school site so you don't have to depend on a parent getting the kid there. Um, when we took back our DBH cases, I mean, you know, they may have had, you know, counseling twice a month written on the IEP, but um, some kids hadn't been seen in the last three months. And, you know, that's actually a big compliance issue, you know, unfortunately, yeah, or fortunately, if the parent doesn't have it that together to get the kid to counseling, they're probably 